Yeah, hello, welcome to YouTube to this video of uh, code exploration for Spice Sharp. So we are doing code exploration so that you know, at least I, I kind of know how to uh, use the classes in there to construct my own components uh, pertaining to fluid flow. Okay, so uh, we will last stop at the we, we last stop the element set. Okay, uh, element set actually takes in a few arguments. Okay, a solver matrix, a solver object, matrix pins, and RHS pins. Uh, this one actually, this matrix pins actually, these are indices of the uh, elements of the Y matrix you actually want to retrieve. This, uh, this in over here instead are the specific elements of the right hand side vector you want to retrieve. Okay. So uh, these indices will be put here, and then. Uh, what you do, what the what this part of the code does is that it will read the matrix pins and you'll say, all right, uh, I'm going to take some, take some, uh, I'm, I'm going to take some values from these uh, matrix pins and I'm going to put it inside. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, access the specific uh, matrix elements within the solver object, okay, using these matrix pins, and then I'm going to start building up a list of elements inside this element set. So you see these elements here, this is an actually a list or rather it's more or like an array of elements. Okay, arrays of course they will implement i list and i enumerable. Okay. Array C sharp. Yeah, you will always always uh implement uh Okay, all arrays implement i list and i enumerable. So you can use a for each statement to iterate through the array. Single dimension arrays also implement i list t i enumerable. Okay, so uh, yep, single dimensional arrays also do that. So you can treat this as if it's a uh, uh, i enumerable or i list. Okay, so this this elements uh, will be uh, constructed over here. So uh, this is what this this uh, this code here is doing. Okay, he was extracting specific elements of the RHS matrix and the Y matrix using uh, these indices that you supply here. Oh, yeah, you you are supplying uh, these indices, which is uh, these indices which you supply here. You actually supply them in, and then you start building your own custom list of elements. Okay, with only the desired uh, matrix elements and RHS RHS right hand side elements that you want to retrieve. After you retrieve them, you can actually manipulate them by adding or subtracting from them. So let's say you have uh, seven values. Okay, your your element list is like seven uh, values long, and then uh, let me let me undo this. Yeah, let's say you want to add uh, you want to have a plus five to this, right? You want to have a plus five to this. So what you need to do if this thing is actually seven elements long. You need to uh, add in 0, 0, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, that's the proper way of doing it. So that uh, if you just want to add uh, 5 to the, the third element of that matrix, you will need to supply uh, 7 values of doubles in here. Okay, then it will go through this for loop and you look through each of the you will look through each of the elements there. And then uh, we will actually use the add function to add. Uh, you do, we'll do matrix addition like that. Yeah. So this is this is actually matrix addition. We this add here we are not okay. Again, we are not uh, adding extra elements to this uh, array of elements. Okay, we're not ex uh, adding extra uh, items to this array. We are actually just uh, doing mathematics matrix or vector addition right here. So this this over here is essentially vector addition. Nothing more than that. Okay. So I've uh, I've uh, made some uh, notes over here. You can actually take a look. The element set add method is to we use we can use this value to add or subtract values. So um, okay. So I mean uh, you can just use the add method and then you add negative numbers or you can use subtract if you want pretty much they are like the same thing with opposite signs uh, so this this is what the uh, element set thing actually does you can actually uh, uh, manipulate elements within the solver using element set 
okay so if you want to specifically uh, add or subtract certain values with this solver you you just uh, supply supply the supply this element set okay so this element set is constructed using a biasing solver math uh, object okay so uh, this is under i biasing simulation state okay biasing solver okay we have a null value uh, which means we are not interested in the, in the y matrix but over here we are actually interested in the uh, we are interested in the right hand side matrix so what is this uh, get rhs indices okay what is this get rhs indices get rhs indices here is actually one of the methods you will find inside one port okay this is uh this is uh here to help you uh, know which uh, index to get for the positive and negative poles of this uh, particular component okay um, okay so let's take a look at one port okay because this is our next class of interest okay this one port will actually supply you the the right coordinates okay it will supply you the right uh, RHS pins or matrix pins okay it will supply you the right pins over here Okay, this uh, uh, get RHS indices, but this whole class as a whole is responsible. I mean, okay, partially for giving you the correct in in the indices for the matrix and uh, right hand side uh, y matrix and right hand side vector. Uh, but it's also doing some other stuff here as well. So let's take a look at one port. Okay, so that's why we are looking at one port next. Okay, how are variables mapped to circuit components? Okay. So our clue here is to look at the get RHS indices and we'll see that we look we look there and then it's there there we are we need to look at one port. Okay, one port is a class located under uh, common behaviors. So spice sharp components common one port. This is a very important class um, when it comes to mapping uh, matrix elements to our components. So this is where it is. What's inside one port? We have a positive and negative node. Okay, and then we have some constructors here. Okay, in fact, two, two overloads of the constructor. One uses a uh, i variable factory. So uh, factory, uh, factory thing, uh, we can talk about it a little bit later. Maybe the, the, easier, the easier thing to look at here. Okay. Yeah, anyway. The easier thing to look at here is uh, what what we are what I'm highlighting here. Okay, where we actually have uh, uh yeah. Can't unselect this for some reason. Then my I'll use the highlight here anyway. So this is a constructor we are looking at. Okay, we supply in a positive and negative node. Okay, the positive and negative nodes they, they actually fulfill this I variable interface. Okay, so these are just positive and negative nodes which we which we put into the one port via dependency injection. Okay, you can see, see this is a classic dependency injection thing. Alright, um, however, that's the, not the only way we can use a component binding context and a factory uh, variable factory to actually construct the positive and negative nodes as well, but that's something for later. Uh, let's say you already have this positive and negative nodes there what then do we do with it okay uh, we see here we see here this this part of the code is very interesting this is the get matrix locations and get rhs indices codes both of them do pretty much the same thing except one does it for the y matrix so this actually does it for the y matrix this does it for the right hand side indices both of them use a i variable map kind of object Okay, this is a variable map object uh, to actually help us to load things. Okay, so four, four indices are, uh, are returned for the matrix location. You can see here, four matrix uh, locations are returned. For right hand side indices, we see there are two, uh, two uh, what do you call that? There are two uh, locations that are being returned. One of them is called the positive, one of them is called the negative. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we, we, see, we see both of these things here, okay, but you may think to yourself, why, 
are we having four matrix variables for for two ports right for for one uh, positive node and one negative node here okay why do we have four uh, elements within the matrix here to understand that we need to look at the modified nodal analysis okay modified nodal analysis and look at the example of the resistor okay look at the example of this resistor okay this is a voltage in and voltage out okay voltage on the inlet of the resistor voltage at the outlet of the resistor i think vb here should be the positive node uh, yeah because current flows from yeah all right actually i don't know which what uh what nodes these are va or vb uh, i'm quite usually current flows out of the positive node at least for current source but for resistors they we don't usually have nodes for them so i don't know how resistor nodes are actually uh, map to this one port thing here can of course actually look at the resistors uh code under rlc you see where the positive and negative nodes are okay okay context notes dot check notes so this you still need a positive and negative node uh we see that uh the constructor used here is one using the state object and the other is using the context object we don't supply directly positive and negative nodes so regardless okay let's just try to read some of this stuff first to understand how the equations are constructed okay ohm's law dictates that the current flowing through the resistor is dictated by this the potential difference over the resistor uh, resistance equals to the uh, current okay so this resistance is presumably constant okay resistor current will flow out of node a okay flow out of node a and so uh, into node b okay so what are these row a's and row b's here what what equations are these okay row a here this is a current balance over the this this node just before the resistor okay row b which is this fb right here is a current balance over this vb okay so what what happens here okay when we do a current balance over over the the a node so I, i'm uh, doing this modified nodal analysis example to help us understand why are we having four matrix elements so this node a we have a current balance okay i out minus i in equals to zero so usually uh positive is okay positive uh, where did i yeah look here our current our convention is that current flowing out of a node is positive this is under the example resistor uh page so yeah and you look when we compute the y matrix here we are actually four elements here so this is a clue to tell you why there are four elements or if not it's essentially the answer okay but how, how are these things constructed so we go step by step i'm going to slow down okay uh we do a current balance over the node a okay which is an inlet node i think is the negative node i'm not that sure but that's how i'm going to assume for the time being if anything you know you guys know anything just correct me in the comments uh yeah so node a we actually do a current balance so the current out the current out of this node okay the current out of node a is actually a uh, vb minus va okay so the current out of this node uh, minus the current in uh, to this node it should be equal to zero okay so fa is actually just a current balance okay it's just a current balance over uh over uh this this node a here okay node a so we just do a current balance so the current balance is essentially the the current flowing into this resistor which is ir okay ir is actually vb minus va or va minus vb over r okay so we have a potential difference yeah so final minus initial over r but we kind of uh, do a negative of it because we need 
uh, minus the the V the R or something like that. It's just like a flowing downhill. Okay, so uh, so uh, yeah, V A minus V B. So this potential is higher than this potential. Uh, then yeah, we will get the we will get the uh, potential difference. Okay, so I'll need to make some changes here. Okay, to F A. I think I made a mistake. At least when I typed out these notes. Uh, let's look at the modified nodal analysis example. Right. So uh, the cur current out should be VA minus VB. Because, uh, of course, yeah, this is the actual current out. If not, you'll be like a negative sign. Okay. And then over here, I should also have VA minus VB if we do a current balance over node B. Okay, so we can see that the current balance uh, over node A will actually give us dependence on both the, vo the voltage at A and the voltage at B. Okay, so VA minus VB equals to IR, uh, the current across the resistor. Okay, so VB minus v, uh, VA minus VB Okay, VA minus VB, all right, uh, over R. VA minus VB over R will be the current flowing out of uh, node A. But it will also be the current flowing into node B. So if you do a current balance over uh, node B, you can do a current balance over node B, the current out minus the current in will also equal to zero. Okay, so the current out, we don't know what it is, but the current into the node B is again VA minus VB over R. Okay, so uh, that's that's fine, that's fine, okay, that's fine here. So the contributions, uh, the contribution to the uh, to this to, I mean to the Y matrix from this resistor, okay. There are four there are four things here: V A over R, V B over minus V B over R, minus V O V A over R, and plus VB over R. So these are the four values that are going on right here. Okay, all of these, uh, all of these are the things that pertain to the, this particular resistor. Okay, of course there are other, uh, there are other uh, contributions that come from VB and VA, but we are only focusing on this resistor, so we do not look at the the uh, other things okay we do not look at the other things uh, here okay so the convention is that the current flowing in and uh, in in uh, all of a node is positive so we can contribute we can compute the contributions to the y matrix all right so yaa is not 1 over r but the contribution by this resistor to yaa is 1 over r okay so now we actually need to start computing our jacobian Okay, so how how does this contribute? How does uh, knowing this contribute to the matrix and our right hand side vector? So this is the uh, after doing the Newton Russell method, we know that we need a Jacobian, and we need a right hand side vector here. But for specifically for uh, for this uh, spy sharp, this this uh, middle thing here is actually split into the two iterations. The k plus one iteration and the k iteration, and the whole thing about the k iteration is actually moved to the right hand side. So you actually see the Jacobian uh, appearing in two places here. Okay, it doesn't really matter, but it allows you to calculate this x one, x two, and x three directly without uh, giving an extra step. So the right hand side vector isn't just the the current balance equations or other equations as well, depending on the modified nodal analysis, but okay. It is this 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 F one F two and F three? If we, of course, take a very simple three D example, three variable example. Okay, um, it's just uh, yeah, we have this this vector here, plus this uh, plus the matrix multiplication of these two, this matrix and this vector right here. So, okay, so this is this is what we have right here. All right, so we we'll need to. To uh, con calculate the contributions to the right-hand side vector, we'll actually need to calculate both the Jacobian and 
uh, this right hand side vector as well. So the contributions to the Jacobian, uh, the four, for this, the four partial derivatives are taken, okay, that pertain specifically to this resistor. Okay, del FA dVA, del FA dVB, del FB dVA, del FB dVB. So this is, this is all the partial derivatives uh, that uh, show you the contribution to the Y matrix, the Jacobian matrix, by this resistor. Okay. So this is why, okay, each each component as it has one inlet port and one outlet port will always have four contributions to the uh, Y matrix. Okay, so if you take a look uh, over here, how how are these things indexed? So you can look at here, uh, look at the pattern here in the Joko the Jacobian, the uh, independent variable, the x one, x two, x three. These are the column. These are the column indices. So column one will always have del x1, del x2. Uh, column one will always have del x1. Column two will have del x2. Column three will have del x3. This is just how the Jacobian is managed. Likewise over here, uh, when you look at the rows, the first row will have, okay, the first row will be definitely del f1. The second row will be del f2. The third row will be del f3, so on and so forth. So, uh, okay, you look at this, one port.cs, we will have two indices here. One is the positive index, one is the negative index. So, uh, this is the index that pertains to the positive node. This is the index that pertains to the negative node. So, the positive node index, where is it? Okay, I assume that positive means out, flowing out, okay, current flowing out. Okay, uh, and it, uh, negative means current flowing in. Okay, so uh, this VB, if, if this is the positive one, VB will, uh, node B will be the positive node, node A will be the negative node. If I'm not wrong. Okay, if I'm not wrong. Okay, uh, uh, positive and negative kind of confuse me a bit here. I'd rather say outlet and inlet. That actually makes more sense to me as a fluid mechanics guy. So, uh, but anyway, we have these two, we have these two uh, things right here. We have this uh, uh, positive, okay, positive, uh, where's the positive and negative? Oh, this is an under one port. Okay, positive and negative uh, variables. So the positive, positive part, right? Okay, the positive and positive uh, index. What does this pertain to? Okay, if, if your if you're uh, yeah, if you're talking about let's say, if the if A actually pertains to one and B pertains to two, okay. So uh, instead of X over here, we have voltage one and voltage two on these uh, vectors right here, for example, okay. So we have voltage one at the top, okay. So we we'll look look for the index of voltage one on this uh, matrix right here. Or rather, this this uh, unknown vector, uh, x one, x two, x three, okay. Uh, okay, I think I think I will just I will just uh, uh, write write it down. It's a lot easier rather than explaining. Okay. Take for example, we have a vector. Okay, I have four lines. Of course, begin. B matrix okay and then what do we have in the matrix okay I have a dot 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 for my first thing and I have a V A dot 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 V B okay dot 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 okay this is where where things will be inside this uh, matrix right here so this is our x1 x2 x3 vector except it's over here so we are actually looking for the of course the k plus one thing or whatever it is so we look for the index in this uh, va okay look for the index in this va okay look for the index and then uh what what index is this okay let's say let's say va 
v a is at index 5 okay yeah. if v a is at index 5 okay all right or maybe index 1 or index 2 yeah we'll just do index 1 yeah index 1 uh, i'll make it very simple okay let's say v a is at index 1 so i will just i will just remove this, the dot 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 at first Okay, let's say VA is at index 1. So we have VA at index 1, which is which kind of relates to this X1 right here. If we if we want to find del FA del VA, okay, we look for del FA del VA. Okay, FA is actually uh it's over here, eh? Del del F1 del X1. If uh, A if A corresponds to 1, then VA will be in X1 here. Del F1 del X1 will be uh, del F A del V A. Okay, so this will be at the first row. Okay, it will be the first row because, uh, well, if if V A is over here, if V A is over here, then the equation stuff. I mean the 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 equation of for uh, row A will also be on the same row. Okay. Equation for row A will be on the same row. Okay, then if we want to look for del V A, right? Del V A. Well, where do we look? We look at the column one. We look at column one right here. So this is, if we want uh, del F A del V A, we actually take this column, column one here. Okay. Ah, never mind. Let. Okay, maybe I'll do this. It's easier. A del F A del V A. Alright. And then over here we have of course V A. Alright. So this is in uh index one. Index one. And then of course the equation. Okay. So the equation also is at index one as well. So taking the VA index one we'll have the row we have row one here already okay if we want the del f a if you are looking for del f a we look at row one which is the same index as the as the uh, index for v a all right and then uh yeah if we if we want to look at where which index the del v a is at Del VA index will be at column one. Okay, it will be at column one. Okay, so this this row here, because this A corresponds to one. Okay, this A corresponds to one. Uh, the VA, the Del VA part will correspond to column one. Del FA will correspond to column one. Okay, so this subscript here actually corresponds. This subscript A actually corresponds to uh. Yeah, this car this subscript A actually corresponds to this this uh row here, whereas this this one actually corresponds to the column. Okay, so rule of thumb here, rule of thumb, is that if you want uh del F A del V A, look for the okay look for the row number of V A. Okay, so del F so we ascertain that uh V A has a row number of one. So anytime you you want have the uh, del V A, you look for a yeah okay so if you want to look for del v a here okay what number is this a this a we actually get it from here v a uh, will correspond to the number one so if you want to look for the index number at the bottom look for the column okay if you want to look for the index number of this uh, del f a look at the row number okay Ah, so so abstract. <laughs> okay, so del F A del V A will be uh, at the row of A and the column of A. Okay, let's say you have a del F A del V B now. Okay, okay, where where will we find the row number? Okay, the row number is the same as before. 
okay the row number of a is at the first row because okay the row number of a fa will be at the first row because va is also at the first row that's how these jacobians are constructed okay so the the row number is the same however the column number will pertain not to a anymore but you pertain to v so uh, for the differential okay so this this will be row number row number of a so if you want to look for the column number for this you want to look for the index for this you look for the column number of the b index okay so if vb is somewhere like in the third column for example vb is in the third column so uh you look for their fa so dot 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 your del f a their vb will be here okay so this is this is uh just some convention for the positive and negative part uh okay so uh if you want to uh, look for specific matrix indices of this del f a del v b all these partial derivatives in the jacobian okay you look look at the top oh i think yeah look at the top okay the the top index the row index will be determined by the numerator here so uh for the row index of this uh partial derivative you look at the the numerator okay the row index uh, will be the row index of a for this del f a okay del f a so the row index for this these two derivatives will be determined by the numerator the column index the column indices will be determined by the the denominator right here so row index will correspond to numerator column index will correspond to denominator okay but this is uh, a a uh, this again this is a uh, a it's not a row number of a matrix so to find uh to find the correct row number we actually look at the column vector here for all the variables and then we we say oh okay maybe we actually place va at row one or row three or row five for example so every time i see a over here okay every time i see a here i will associate with the row number where va actually appears inside this uh, uh vector this uh column vector okay so this is just some indexing for you okay it is a thing with matrices it's a little bit uh it messes with you sometimes if you're not used to it it messes with me anyway sometimes but this is this is how we actually map the the column numbers and the row numbers of the matrix okay so we actually uh yeah first step is that of course numerators are numerators actually de determine the row number uh denominators uh uh determine the column number and how do we know which row and column okay if you want the 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 index number for a we actually look at the index number where uh, va is actually placed in this column so in this case va is placed at uh, index one so every time we see a we can substitute this a every time we see a we know it's at index one so um, the numerator here is a column index so we look for column one for fa and we look for uh, oh no sorry the the numerator determines the row number so so a actually represents index one because uh, va is at index one so we actually look for the row index one or row number one for the numerator here and if uh, fb is at row number seven okay if vb is at row number seven so b actually corresponds to seven so we look at uh we look at uh row number seven for the fb likewise for del va del vb okay the these things here in the numerator these are actually determined by the uh this will determine the column number okay and the column index number uh well well you have to look at the subscript here uh for the node a 
uh, corresponds to, uh, for example, index 1, as we said here. If B corresponds to index number 7, then we'll look for column 7. Okay? So, uh, again, here we have a positive and negative here. Not, not much explanation is being given in these few lines of code. We've got to like, figure stuff out. But okay, numerator again. Numerator uh, will be the row. So these two things actually uh, refer to the numerator. Okay, so this is actually, uh, these two actually uh, deal with, for example, del FA or del FBs, for sorry, del FB, because, uh, uh, okay, this, this one actually deals with the, the current balance over the positive node. Okay, this is the derivative to with respect to the voltage at the positive and then the negative node. Okay, so uh, when we have a positive and positive here, this is del, del F positive over del V positive. Okay, so uh, yeah, if let's take for example, we have a vector. Okay, from this we know A corresponds to index 1 and to locate I'll just write down the notes first within the Jacobian the numerator partial FA corresponds to the row number the denominator Partial, partial VB corresponds to the column number. Okay. So, partial FA, partial VA. corresponds to row 1, column 1 if VB okay, if VB yeah, should I just wrote, wrote in, writ, written this down is at col, uh, row 7 then B corresponds to index number 7 okay, so that actually tells you that for example, this, this case uh, then belongs to row 7 C B in denominator and column 1 okay column 1 C A in numerator oh wait, denominator so this should be numerator okay that's it so when we see this positive positive here so when we see a positive positive here oh yeah okay actually i, I wrote i wrote stuff down already here okay. okay i already wrote stuff down here actually i i don't have to repeat myself okay so let's try pause pause will correspond to partial F positive so this is the current ba balance over the positive node with, res uh, part, uh, with respect to the part, uh, the voltage at the positive node okay and uh, put neck pos or pos neck pos neck will correspond to okay I'll just give leave the examples here for you so positive will be here negative will be at the bottom okay this will correspond to uh, this positive at the bottom okay so that that actually just explains 
Yeah, that explains what this, this positive negative indexing here is about. Okay. So this, these are the things that uh, pertain to this. Alright, so uh, what are the elements actually uh, given to the uh, positive and negative nodes? You can see that uh, YAA or their FA, their VBA, all, all of these things, they actually all have this 1 over R thing. Okay, 1 over R is actually the, the inverse of resistance or else known as the conductance. And then we'll see that under the, the biasing side of the resistor, you see that uh, we actually add conductance, minus conductance, minus conductance, and conductance. Right? So uh, we have 1 over R, minus 1 over R, minus 1 over R, 1 over R. Okay, whether A or B is actually the inlet or outlet or the positive or negative doesn't really matter right here. In this case, because it's a linear linear function, or just the way that they have derivatives is uh, is like that. Okay, so it doesn't really matter, and from here we cannot tell whether, uh, I, I mean I cannot tell whether uh, VB is negative, VA is positive, which node is which. Uh, I, I'll have to take a deeper look into it. Uh, but right now, this is what the modified nodal analysis is, and this is why you will see, this is why you will see the uh, positive and negative things here. Okay, for right hand side indices, uh, I have not explained uh, just yet. Okay, I have not e explained so much just yet, so I'll just leave it be for the time being. Just know that the Jacobian... Oh, never mind. For it, forget it. Yeah, the Jacobian is here. Okay, for the current, we actually have two, two contributions. Okay, so um, for the current, we have two contributions. That's a little bit more straightforward because uh, the current balance over A will be affected by the current through A, right? So the current, the current, uh, okay, never mind. I'll, I'll take a break now. Uh, my mind's a bit in circles, but yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, the, the long story short, the Jacobian, the Jacobian uh, is, uh, affected in four places by one positive and one negative node for the following reasons if we do the current balance thing okay if we do current balance this is this is what we will this is what we will get okay okay a disclaimer of course i'm not an electrical engineer i wasn't trained like that i'm only a chemical engineer so i'm just figuring this stuff as i as i go through all right but uh that's all i have for this video um at least hopefully this will show you how we actually get the matrix locations what how to make sense of this bit of code here using the modified nodal analysis okay okay uh stop for today that's enough i'll see you next time